Hey guys, and welcome to the Happily Committed channel. This is a project, a community that we created specifically for you, for anybody who is looking for help in their relationship. So the good, the bad, the ugly, whether you're on here just looking for a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more information on how to navigate your relationship, how to create a healthy relationship with your partner, or if you messed up and you were trying to fix the relationship, or even if your partner messed up and you're trying to gain better perspective as to why, right? This channel, this community is here for you. If this is your first time joining the channel, welcome. I would highly recommend subscribing um, because by subscribing, you get notifications of all of our content, right? The content that we put out, we try to put out as much content as we possibly can, usually on a weekly basis. Um, and the information is for you, right? The more knowledge, the better. If you have already been a part of the Happily Committed community for quite some time, welcome back. If you don't know who I am, my name is Danny and I'm one of the head coaches here at the Happily Committed Project, along with my other amazing colleagues and teammates, Coach Natalie and Coach Adrian. If you have come to this channel because you are looking for help, you have come to the right place. We are here to support you, to guide you through probably the most vulnerable point in your life. So again, you have come to the right place. The purpose of this video today is actually a two-part, right? So this is actually the second part of a video that I recorded previously, which was understanding the differences between an emotional affair and a physical affair. So I had mentioned in that video that I wanted to provide you with some information in regards to how to end an emotional affair if you off, if you find yourself in that situation, right? So question is, how do you end an emotional affair? You have now you now have the information and the knowledge as to what the differences are between an emotional and a physical affair. And now the question is, how do you end the affair? How do you end the emotional affair, right? The first thing that you want to do is you want to self-reflect. It is incredibly important to gain awareness around the situation. And the reason for why I say that is because there is a reason for why you are in the situation. There is a reason for why you have decided to lean on somebody else for support other than your spouse, other than your partner. Are there needs that are not being met in the relationship? Are there certain expectations that are not being met? Are you not feeling fulfilled? Are there re uh, frustrations and resentments that you have that have been compounding over a period of time that you feel like you have not been able to resolve with your partner because the communication isn't so great? Whatever the case may be, it is incredibly important to get to the root of it because if you don't get to the root of it, it's going to continue to happen, right? I want you to think about it this way. So if you have a plant, a weed, whatever the case may be, and you just rip the top off and you leave the roots, it's going to come back again. You have to get to the root in order for it not to grow back, in order for it not to be an issue anymore. So pause, take a moment, take a breath, and sit with your thoughts and try to really understand why you are having the emotional affair because that really is at the foundation of being able to move on from the situation. Once you have given it thought, once you feel like you have a better understanding as to why it is happening, the second thing is taking accountability. Accepting the fact that your actions have a reaction. You know, there are repercussions for those actions and how you potentially have made your partner feel throughout this process, right? It's really important for you to acknowledge and say, you know, I, I messed up. And even if the reason for why you started the emotional affair was because you were not satisfied in the relationship, there's still accountability on your part for potentially not communicating that to your partner. Or maybe if you did communicate that to your partner and you feel like it didn't go anywhere, did you try something else? Did you try couples counseling? Did you try relationship coaching? Did you try everything you possibly could to try to fix things? Now, again, I don't want to sit here and blame everything on you because 
a relationship is a two-way street, right? There's, there's equal fault in this situation. But I wanna say that with caution, right? Because that is a very um, triggering statement for a lot of people, particularly individuals who have been cheated on. Because there is this sense of blaming the victim for the infidelity or the affair or whatever the case may be. And that is not what I'm saying. I am not saying that it is your partner's fault that you decided to step outside of the relationship. Because at the end of the day, that's a decision that you made. You could have decided to not do that, but you made that decision and that is where you are accountable for. That is what you're accountable for. What I am saying is if there is dissatisfaction in the relationship and there are things about your partner that they are not contributing to the relationship that you needed, it may have been a catalyst or a trigger for you to start to look elsewhere. So taking accountability, having that transparent conversation with your partner, being open and honest and real, being as clear and concise as you can, and making sure that you have really thought about the situation so you can provide your partner with the answers that they feel they're going to need in order to be able to move on from the situation or at least start to heal. The third thing is, which kind of piggybacks off of the, the, the accountability portion is honesty, being, being open, being honest, telling your partner the situation, why you're in that situation, what led to that, who the person is, the steps that you're taking to make sure that that no longer happens again. All of those things are going to be necessary in ending the emotional affair. And the most important one of all is cutting the communication, not with your partner, but with the person you are having an affair with, right? Because there is no way that you're going to be able to reconcile the relationship or fix the relationship if that's what you're hoping to do if you are still in contact with your affair partner, be it emotional or physical. So cutting all communication, letting that person know, hey, look, I am actively trying to work on my relationship. I am sorry that I got involved in this situation, but because I'm going to focus on my partner now and fixing our relationship, this can no longer continue. I wish you the best of luck. Please don't contact me anymore. And make sure that you are removing their phone number, getting rid of their email, deleting them off of social media, doing whatever it is that you need to do to prove to your partner that you are serious about wanting to reconcile the relationship. So again, the most important thing that you can do in this situation is cutting the person off. So just to reiterate, some of the things that we want to consider when ending the emotional affair or the steps that you should be taking. Number one, self-awareness, taking time to reflect and think about why you are in this situation. The second part is accountability, taking accountability for your actions, owning what you did. The third part is the honesty factor, right? Which is being completely open and transparent and honest with your partner so that you can actually start the process of healing and reconciling. And the last part is cutting the affair, cutting the person, cutting all communication and making sure that they are no longer a part of your life. If you are struggling with trying to understand why you did what you did, that is what we are here for. I am more than happy to guide you through that process. Big part of what I do is helping people to gain new perspective, to have a different understanding of their situation, to step out of the subjective and look at it objectively so that you can actually get to the root of the issue. And sometimes it is very difficult for you to do that on your own. And that is why I am more than happy to help you navigate that and support you through that process. So I would highly recommend booking a one-on-one -on -one coaching session in order for you to feel like you are able to get to the next step. You know, I say this to people all the time. Sometimes in our weakest moments and when we are the most vulnerable, we need to lean on somebody. Sometimes we need somebody to hold our hand, to tell us it's going to be okay, and to walk us through the first step so that we realize that we can actually do this, that we can actually go on this journey and get to the other side. And that is what I'm here for, and that is what we as coaches are here for to help you do. 
if you relate to this video, um, if this is something that you are currently going through, which my assumption is it is because you're watching this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and you leave a comment down below. I want to know what you are going through. I want to hear your story. We read as many of the comments as possible. I try to respond to as many as possible and I utilize it to actually create more content in the future to help you and others in these situations. Like I said, this is your community. This is your channel. So tell us what it is that you need. Tell us what it is that you want. Tell us what you would like to see next. Again, if you just want to learn a little bit more, maybe you just want to peruse the website and see what we're about because it's your first time on the, on the site, you can visit us at www.happilycommitted.com where you can book your one-on-one -on -one coaching session where we have an array of products that are incredibly helpful. We have products around infidelity, around self-awareness, around communication all there to give you the support that you need and to make your life a little bit easier. I will provide all of those links in the description down, box down below so you can just go directly to what it is that you feel you need. Again, my name is Danny. I'm your life and relationship coach. I hope you're staying happy and healthy and I will see you in the next video.